So in this video, we're going to be talking about stock buyback. I actually ma um, messaged new management, one of the management guys up at the very top about this. And um, I'll share with you guys what I said. And also we're, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Xiaomi as well. So first of all, Xiaomi's SU7, 120,000 firm orders, all right? Firm orders, that means it's locked in and it's going to be sent and lined up for production 100%. No chance of refund. Now, we know for a fact that there has been a portion of this, all right? I wouldn't say a majority, a portion of this has been a mistake. Some people have clicked lock in order by mistake. It wasn't very clear. It was more like a confirm X, uh, specification it was a button confirmed specification but that was actually send the order to the factory and lock in no more refund so there is actually a lot of um, protest around this a lot of people are unhappy but one thing is for sure 120,000 firm orders unprecedented definitely and there are definitely going to be a hundred thousand a hundred twenty thousand of Xiaomi SU7s produced now the people that accidentally order the car but have no intention of buying the car and have locked it in, well, they're either going to have to take delivery or what I think will happen is most of them will not actually take delivery of the car. Most of them will abandon the car and the factory will just produce it and it's going to become an inventory car. So what we could see, and this is uh, something that uh, I think will happen, is that a big amount of those 120,000 uh, firm orders will become inventory cars and inventory cars that the original guy who ordered it does not have any intention of buying. So that's going to become a big burden for Xiaomi. It's going to be oversupplied and we're going to see very soon, maybe in the next six to nine months, all right, by the end of the year, we're going to see Xiaomi cars really accumulate inventory and Xiaomi is going to have to run like clearance sales. They're going to do like inventory discounts, sort of like what Neo is doing. That I think is going to put some pressure on Envo. Okay. So Envo cars, they're going to come out. Uh, so the timeline for Envo, let's just make it very clear. They're launching the brand in May and then launching the vehicle in Q3 and then deliveries in Q4. So having watched the entire presentation, I'm sure Will and Lee has to rethink the pricing and maybe some of the um, some of the things inside the car. So definitely they're going to have to price the car very competitive compared to the SU7. And also, um, if you think about it, they have to make it so that it's more worth it than a inventory SU7 car because those inventory SU7 cars will probably get like maybe 5,000 RMB discount or up to 10,000 RMB discount, uh, depending on the situation and the amount of cars they have in surplus. But the Envo car will have to compete against the inventory price of the Xiaomi SU7. So that means there is actually quite a bit of pressure on the Envo car to have it uh, as affordable starting price as affordable as the Xiaomi's SU7 inventory car price okay of course they can have the bare bones minimum version a little bit cheaper than Xiaomi's SU7 inventory car and I think that would still be a deal a good deal but there is definitely a lot of debate within Neo's management team to discuss how to price this car how to strategically flip the table because Neo CEO said the whole entire point of that uh, car is to come into the market and flip the table essentially so they're definitely still gonna flip the table but they probably have to rethink the pricing quite a bit okay now what you are seeing is that with the Xiaomi car some of some people are you know looking at this more logically because uh, some of them were a bit too rushed in their orders and if you look at it logically it's the Xiaomi SU7 isn't exactly uh, uh, you know that 
bang for the buck because if you compare it with a BYD car, I mean, all the different specs compared to the BYD Han, it is pretty much inferior except for dimensions, all right? So, uh, I mean, like, it's just, you know, if, if you look at it logically, so that's why people have been regretting locking in their orders and thinking about it more clearly, they want to refund their deposit. So there's that. But I also think that, Xiaomi's car is going to cool down within the next three to six months. People with more calm heads will just realize that there's going to be even better cars coming out at a cheaper price. And I think the next car to come out, the IM L6, is actually going to undercut Xiaomi's car for sure, 100%. And Neo's Envo car will just undercut Xiaomi car as well. So... It, you know, the, the, they have a lot of orders now, but I don't think it's going to be sustained, all right? These orders locked in, very nice, but most of them don't have the intention of buying the vehicle, okay? So that's that. You can take it for what it's worth. Now, on the topic of stock buyback, I know a lot of you guys, even in my Discord, some of you guys have said that why doesn't Neo use some of their cash pile to do a stock buyback? Well... It's very dumb for an unprofitable company to spend their money unwisely on a stock buyback. It doesn't really uh, help them. It's only reasonable for a profitable company that's earning money and they have extra money on hand to do stock buyback. Uh, doing stock buyback now would actually not create extra shareholder value. You know, and people think that it's going to really help. Uh, the share price but no you're depleting the cash reserves which are very very important for neo uh, they need the cash for infrastructure for more r d for more sales deployment to expand everything so cash is very very important and you need cash to weather the storm for the next two or three years you know with all the the sub brand envo and then also the sub sub brand Firefly all coming out, you're going to need a lot of money for all these kind of uh, sales promotion, etc. So it would be unwise for NEO to spend money on share buyback as a company. Now, what's very different is uh, upper management buying the stock as a way to boost investor confidence. And this is what I messaged to uh, NEO management. And the guy that I messaged is actually the former head of uh, former GM of Neo in Beijing, but he got promoted to president of sales here in China. Uh, so he's up actually right at the very top. A lot of people have to report to him. And the only two superiors that he has are Willem Lee and um, uh, Qin Li Hong. So he's actually like number three, basically. He's like number three, number four guy, basically top 10 in the management and i told him very blatantly you know um, the share price is kind of low a lot of my viewers and the investor community are hoping that you and maybe some of the management people could buy some stock to show a vote of confidence and perhaps also boost investor confidence that and show that you guys still believe in the company. So that is what I told him. He's a very nice guy. He's very open to feedback. And I got nothing but good words to say about him. And he's helped implement a lot of great changes uh, with Neo. And they've done a lot of smart things in terms of sales and promotion and all that kind of stuff. So the message was sent. He did not reply to me yet because he's a very busy guy, you know, super, super busy. You can imagine you're like, you got basically a whole entire company to manage. So uh, it's very reasonable for him not to reply to me. But I, I know he gets the message. And these guys, they all own a lot of stock, all right, because they are upper management. And I'm sure it is also in their best interest to see the stock price go up rather than go down. But... We'll have to see if they actually decide to do anything like that. The reason why Willem Lee and Chin Li Hong, they're not buying Neo stock is because they take away zero salary, basically. They don't get any salary. In fact, they got to spend some of their own money on like uh, airplane tickets and, and hotel fees and that kind of stuff. 
their salary is basically nil. So they're not being paid a lot of money. All right. So that's something you got to remember. They're very humble guys. So they don't have that kind of spare money to just say, I'm going to buy like 10 million shares of Neil stock. Actually, they have a lot of Neil stock and it would be counterintuitive for them in their eyes to be buying more Neil stock. But of course, we, we want them to get, understand the message that investor confidence is very important. So hopefully, maybe they decide to buy more Neil stock. Maybe they don't. But we can't blame them if they decide not to, okay? Because they already have a lot of new stock. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, hopefully they do decide to pull the trigger and buy some new stock. That would be very helpful. But in general, the NEO as a company should definitely not be buying their own stock. Management should be buying their own stock. And I hope that they do. Fingers crossed. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.